Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the NFL Wild Card Recap Show. Uh, we're going to release it on the podcast on Monday, January the 6th. Uh, if you're catching it on YouTube this evening, congrats. You got the uh, the quick version of it. Let's see. Turn that turn that music down some more. Uh, get, get involved with this. Uh, of course, the show always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Ooh, this has been a wild weekend, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a been a little crazy. I uh, I went one and three. You went zero and four. Yes, sir. That uh, far cry from last year. Last year you went what eleven and zero? Weren't you perfect in the playoffs against the spread? I did, I did not miss a game in the playoffs last year. Uh, it would not surprise me for that to be completely opposite this year. It and what what's nuts is I don't know that these are super surprising, but they were really surprising. I think to us, like not that we couldn't see this stuff happening. Yeah, it's just that it did happen, right? Yeah, the fact that all of them went that way is is a little weird. Um, the one, that, the only game that shocks me is is the Saints uh, uh, Vikings game. Yeah, I, there's there's no scenario where I saw the Vikings being able to win that game. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, all of the rest of them were short lines, and and. Every dog had a chance. Every road team had a chance, and and it was one of those things where it was just kind of a coin flip game, and anybody could have won any of those games all the way up to the very end. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, we had three road teams win, um, not all of them dogs. So obviously no. Seattle gets the win. Uh, yep. Let Let's go ahead and start off on Saturday afternoon. Let's go ahead and talk about this one. Um, the Texans. Get a twenty-two to nineteen win in overtime over the Bills, and the Bills were up sixteen to nothing, and felt like this game was in hand. And then you you goof around, and you give them a shot in the arm. You let Deshaun Watson do Deshaun Watson things, and suddenly you've got a sixteen to eight game. You turn the football over. You got sixteen to eleven. Um, I I thought it was really impressive that they were able to drive down the field and kick the field goal to tie the game at, at 19 to get it to overtime. But it, tell me what, what you thought about this game. I, I thought the Bills were the better team outside of the quarterback position. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought their secondary, their team defense, the way they played white um, for a large part of the game just took Hopkins completely out. Th- yeah. There aren't a lot of people in the world that can do that. Okay. And, and I thought they did. I thought they gave Watson all the hell he wanted to, to be able to give him uh, disruptions and not allow him to make plays. Uh, it finally, at some point in time, stars become stars. They do what they do. And, and you can only hope to contain those guys and your guys have to make plays. I, I, I thought a few of the missed passes by um, Josh Allen were not his fault, but overall I thought not only did he play a bad game, he played a really bad game. He, he See, did things that's, that – That's surprising no, to me because I didn't feel like it was it was that bad. I mean, it, man. yeah, they, they threw the football 46 times, and that's just something that – that you don't want to do, but it's not about throwing it. It's when they threw it. He had there were several times he had all day to throw the football, and so instead of looking for the open guy and getting the first down and learning how to run an offense, that see, that's not his mo. He sits back there and says, "Oh, I have all day. I'm throwing it deep," and and he throws it 60, 70 yards to a guy that's double covered and it's not close. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're right about that. It'd be different if you hit the deep man because you see, ooh, I got a shot and he's open. Let's see if we can hit this. But but he's throwing it into double coverage when he's got all day to throw the football. Yeah. And I got to think that somebody underneath has got to be more open than that. The problem is, is those passes take precision and they take timing. And I don't know that he's got that. 
there there were some there was a moment in this game where I just I felt like this was a team of destiny. Um, I thought they were going to get this win uh, on on the drive where he's coming down the field and he's running and he decides to flip. The, and there's what less than a, or a minute left, something like that. Yeah, it's like a minute forty left. And he I tries mean, there's time. There's plenty of time. Yeah, he tries to lateral the ball. And it, can you explain? What might have been going through his head at that moment? No, he's because an I, idiot. No, I, he that's the problem. This is the problem with not – when you're grading quarterbacks, the most important thing that you can look at – I don't give a shit about arm strength. I don't care about athleticism. I don't care about any of this. I don't – none of those things matter if your quarterback is an idiot. None of them. <laughs> None of them matter. Jameis Winston puts up unbelievable numbers. He's one of the dumbest quarterbacks in the history of the league. He's he's just a moron. And guess what? There's no coaching that out of him. You're, you're all of a sudden not going to educate this man at 25 years old. You're just not. Yeah. Josh Allen is no different. Yeah. He doesn't know how to read defenses. He knows how to make throws. There's a big difference in that, man. And can he make throws? And he is a hell of an athlete. You're right. He sure is. He can. But his athleticism is only going to carry him so far, and his arm is only going to carry him so far. For a front office that seems to have missed on nobody in their last four or five drafts, they they have hit on everybody, and this team has got talent that nobody's ever heard of, by the way. I mean, if this was a college football team, they, they, they got two stars everywhere. And and yeah, and I'm not saying all the guys they have are two stars. I'm just saying they don't have stars on their team anywhere. Yeah. And and they compete and fight like hell with anybody. If they had a better trigger man, not only do they win this game, I think they got a shot to win it all. Yeah. I think they're a quarterback away from being a Super Bowl contender. I yeah, believe I think, that. I think you're right because I think it is it, this team is built a lot like the the old Patriots team where it wasn't so much the offense that was carrying it. It was obviously the defense. And yeah. this defense was able to shut down basically everybody, and the offense was not able to put up enough points. Now, in, right. in, in the NFL today, you are going to have to put up points, and that's what Buffalo lacked this season. Oh, but, I mean, they, they, won, they won double-digit games scoring 18 points a game. Yeah, they didn't. It, they didn't have to put up points. If you and look they at their strength of score... schedule, like it, it, it makes sense as to why they did. Um, but they, you know, it, you you look at who they played, and obviously when they played tougher competition, uh, they ran into problems. Like that's uh, just it, here. Here are their losses on the season. Um, they lost to the Patriots twice. Lost to yeah, twice. Uh, yeah, twice. Lost to the Eagles. Lost, and the Ravens. Uh, lost at the Browns and lost to the Ravens. Yeah, and so and then they lost to the Jets at the end of the season when they weren't playing anybody. That's right. They rested everyone. That didn't count. So, and and the Browns inexplicably have two wins that nobody can explain. This Buffalo win and the Ravens win. And nope. even then, like they only gave up nineteen points to the Browns. That's right. That's right. You know? They just couldn't score on that defense. That's that, right. that first loss to the Patriots, they only gave up sixteen points. That's right. You know, I, they they only gave up twenty four to uh, the Ravens. They gave up twenty four to the Patriots at the end of the year. You know, you, if you they have, be able if to they have a better, if they have a better quarterback, both of those last two games are easily winnable, and all the rest of them are winnable. Yeah, and that's that's the problem is you know it, it, McDermott is obviously one hell of a coach. I, I think he's I think he's call. really close to elite level coaching, but he'll never get that kind of credit because his win loss record will never reflect it, and he'll never have the playoff wins or the championships as long as Josh Allen is his quarterback. Yeah. This I, is one of those situations where you know how I feel about these things. As soon as you know you have a losing hand, you fold it. The rest of this team is stupid loaded. And I'm not saying draft another quarterback, spend more draft capital on another guy, but I am saying draft free agents somehow bring somebody in to at least make the man compete because everybody else is competing for a spot. And you then know, the other part of this is is they do need wide receiver help and they need better offensive line help. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, do agree with that. Th- th- like wide receiver, I, I Josh Brown's a good story. Cole Beasley's a good story. These guys are, you know, what they are, but they ain't special, man. I mean, they, they're just they're they are literally no. the only receivers <laughs> that are not maybe as good as the Patriots receivers. 
Uh, interesting uh, stat from this game that I thought was kind of telling. Uh, Buffalo actually held the ball for a minute less in this game. It was 36 minutes, 25 seconds for the Texans. The second, the second half, Houston oh, yeah. just dominated the football game. But, Complete but, but, and utter domination in but one here, half. Here's what I'm, what I'm talking about is you look at the number of plays, and Buffalo ran 20 more plays than the Texans did. Yeah. It it kind of blew my mind. Like, watching the game, I, so one of the questions that, that one of these pregame shows asked before Sunday's games was, is this the best, worst game we've ever watched or the worst, best game we've ever watched? So what, what would you say? Was this a good game? I thought it was a good game. I thought it was entertaining. I mean, you've got a guy out there making mistakes, and, and you have Bill O'Brien, which does what he does, which is, we're not showing up for the first half of playoff games. Yeah. Um, you know, he's been in three and they've scored a total of zero points. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's kind of telling about him. Uh, but, but the adjustments that were made and, uh, and, the, and the way him and, and Ronio Cornell, Cornell also with, with that defense, I mean, they, they shut down the bills offense. Yeah. Held them to uh to two field goals after halftime and, you know, one of them was to get to overtime, but, I mean, they shut them down in overtime as well. So, yeah, this was uh, interesting. Tell me tell me your thoughts on Deshaun Watson. You know, he has been hailed as the next coming for quite a while, and he did show out in this game, but there were moments where uh, he could not get anything done on offense. And it's not like he had bad stats. I mean, he's 20 out of 25, 247 yards, one touchdown. He had 14 carries, was the leading rusher with uh, 55 yards and a touchdown, but... I I can't tell if like when will he get over that hump? Like I think some of this is product of system and coaching. Um I, I really do. I fully believe and there are gonna be people that are gonna give me hell for this and just say I'm wrong. If you replace if you swap him and Patrick Mahomes positions, both their careers look identical to what the other person looks like now. If he was in Kansas City with Andy Reid and had that offensive system going, they would be just as good as they are now. I'm not saying they would be more dangerous with him as opposed to, to to Mahomes, but I'm saying they would not take one step backwards, and he would get all the accolades that Mahomes gets. And if you put Mahomes in these positions with this team and Bill O'Brien calling the plays, I just think the separation's that big. He's good. He's in the conversation as – man, maybe one day he could be those guys. He ain't ever going to be those guys until he gets a better system under him or a better coach, or unless Bill drastically changed how he coaches and what he does. Yeah, I, I, think I mean, you're that's, right. that's my opinion because I think he's got all the talent in the world. I thought in that draft when he came out, we did a pre-draft show, and I said he's the best quarterback in this draft. He's the guy I would take over all of them. He's the most battle-tested quarterback out of them all, and he's proved it on the biggest stages, and he's done it for longer. He has no weaknesses when it comes to how he plays the game. And and I just thought that was real. I thought that was true. And, and you know, yeah. two guys went way before him that I thought were laughable. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about the Saturday night game and – I don't know that we spend a ton of time on this. Uh, Titans 20, Pats 13. Uh, really, it was 14 to 13 until the, the very, very yeah. end. Yeah. But this was, it, obviously, I don't think most of America fully enjoyed the game. There wasn't a lot of scoring. It was, you know, very defensive. Uh, there were no scores after halftime until, you know, nine seconds left in the game. Yeah. But to a football purist, uh, people like you and me, and and even though your team lost, I think that you can appreciate the level of scheming, the the level of um, it just all the stuff that went into making this game. It, it was, I, I don't I don't I don't know that there are I don't know that I'd wax poetic about it like that. I think this is one one man's domination over an entire team. That's that's the story of this game. And when one guy can beat an entire team like that, that other team does not deserve to win. Yeah, and I think you're talking about Derrick Henry. Uh, Correct. Derrick Henry was 
bananas. Why, why on earth they continued to pull him off the field on several third and threes and third and fours and third and twos? Yeah. I, I literally, I was thinking, thank God. Thank you. We're, go, we're about to get this stopped. You know how I know that? Because the only son of a bitch we can't stop is on the bench right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. And and he's still had 34 carries and 182 yards, even though they, they game, were taking The game would have been over much sooner. I don't know that the score would have gotten too much crazier because they started doing a good job containing him, and instead of getting seven- and eight-yard gashes, he was only getting three and two. Um, but – at no point in time did he get tackled for a loss except for like three. And one of those, he fell down. Um, I, you just, I, I just, I was just thankful that at some point in time, maybe he was just tired and they had to pull him. But you, if you're him, a, you can't be tired on third down. You, yeah. you just can't. So it has to be offensive scheming, which means, Oh, it's third down. It's a passing down that it worked out. <laughs> you better be glad it worked out because I'm going to tell you, well, you got, you got lucky that worked out. Yeah. That's wrong. You got a guy that they can't stop. You know what Bill would have done on the other side? Bill would have ran him and ran him and ran him until he said, Coach, you can't go no more. Yeah. He would have ran him 80 times if he said, I could do it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Uh, when third, the other team has something you can't stop, you, you you just don't stop doing it. You just don't. He uh, he did have the only receiving touchdown in the game as well. Um no, he didn't. No, he didn't? No, some white backup oh. tight end caught the first touchdown of the game as soon as Chung went out of the game. They went right after Chung's uh, safety. You're right. You're right. First, uh, Ferkser. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He didn't. It, it wasn't a receiving touchdown. He he had one reception for 22 yards. Um, I was looking at my stats wrong. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, nope, I'm sorry. Edelman had a, uh, a rushing touchdown, which was a genius play call. Uh I mean, just ridiculous with with Tom yelling at Julian Edelman to get in his spot and then handing off on a jet sweep. Beautiful play call. Beautiful yeah. play call. Um, the the most impressive uh, part of this game, I think, was – may, how about this? Maybe not impressive. The most fun part of the game was watching Vrabel use – the scheme that Belichick had come up with as far as running down the clock. Now, I still don't understand it. Uh, explain to me why you would want the clock to get under five minutes um, with the, the best quarterback in football on the other I side. Thought, I thought that was going to come back to bite them when, when, when Julian Edelman dropped the, third, the big third down pass and they decided to punt yeah. on, on fourth and six when I thought this is a ball game, you got to go for it, you might not get the ball back. Um at that point in time, that's after this whole sh- ordeal happened, I thought, this is stupid on Bravel's part. If you think there's a chance that Tom can go down and score and you run all of this time off the clock, it's not going to take him five minutes to score. Okay? It's not going to take him four and a half minutes to score. If they are capable of scoring, they're going to score with nothing left and you lose the game. Yeah. And I didn't. And all they needed was a field goal, by the way. And so I just did not understand him doing it. Now it's funny, and then you know, Bill found this loophole in the rules, and and then Bill's getting frustrated and pissed off because it's happening to him now. And he even said after he found the loophole in the rules, and it was a game probably against the Jets or somebody like that. So he likes to piss off and find these weird rules against. Um, but uh, I mean, he even made it clear. They have to. The competition committee has to change this rule. A for, forget about who it benefits or disbenefits. For for literally four minutes of airtime, nothing happens. Yeah, you 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 have people sitting on their couches watching this game. Millions of people around the country are all watching this game, and for five to six minutes. Nothing is happening. You're, We're watching you're discussing, 25, 30 seconds tick off the clock. They're going to time, you know, somebody's yeah. gonna jump off sides. They're gonna go to, you know, whatever. And it it's just it's just gonna tick, 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 tick. And you're just standing there watching people. You're watching refs talk to coaches. You're watching, you're watching nothing happen. And if I'm the competition committee, I don't care about fair or unfair. That's irrelevant. All I give a damn about is that's the most boring thing I've seen happen on TV in a long time, and it cannot happen. It there's just gotta, cannot happen. There's, there's got to be a way that 
it, because an, an a, a penalty on the offense should theoretically should not be able to penalty. Yeah, it, it it should um it should not hurt the defense. That's right. Right. What, so what like, I would think the rule would be really simple. Actually, the, if I it, it's just like one of those situations where if the offense jumps off sides. Um, you know, it's a it's a 10 second runoff, but the defense can decline the 10 second runoff. Like yeah. if the defense is behind and the offense jumps off sides under two minutes, the defense without a timeout can say, We don't want the 10 seconds taken off. You got to leave that. We want to keep the 10 seconds. Yeah. It should be the defense's decision to, Hey, they, they've now made the delay of game. We would like, if you have a big lead, we would like the clock continue to run. You back them up. It snaps, and now we maybe milk a couple more seconds before they snap the football off, or we would like the clock to stop. I don't know why it's any different than the two minute situation. The defense gets the option. Yeah, and it's there's so there's a five minute situation and there's a two minute situation. That's right, it, but it, it shouldn't be there should not be a five minute situation. No, like a, well, we, we I'm shouldn't okay be sitting with you in, having some weird five minutes. Situation. I don't know what the purpose is. I just. I just know because if it happens at eight minutes left in the game, you know, it doesn't matter. If if you're a situation where you're the, the, the Falcons in the Super Bowl and you're up twenty eight to three and the other team is making a massive comeback, you know, yeah. and 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 you're wanting to do this, then that would help you win. And it would help you win at eight minutes or ten minutes left in the fourth quarter. You should be doing this every time you have to punt. Um but it's one of those situations where I don't. It, there shouldn't be. I think, a the, minute def- and I think a half. the defense. You should. The offense should not benefit on a penalty. Correct. If the offense penalize, or and the, and the same thing for the defense. By the way, if the defense commits a penalty, they should not benefit in any way with the clock. Whatever the clock rules are that are made to penalize somebody, they shouldn't hurt the non-offending team. That's what I, I'm trying I agree. to say. Now, now. I- of course, big part of this was New England jumped off sides on one of the one of the plays, and okay. that's that's a problem, right? So it had they not done that, then you know, then what we're talking about really goes into effect. But the fact that they did uh, made it where you you can continue to do this, and obviously I don't think he down, could but, continue. I think the refs told him if you do it again, even after that, because he punted after that. No, he did. But that's it, it, he punted because it was down to the five minute mark. Like but it, it wasn't under five yet. No, it he wasn't could've, yet. But he could have done it one more time. He could. He punted it with like five eighteen. They could have done it with one more time. He chose not to. He yeah. either chose not to or was told, "You've committed your two penalties. If you do it again, it's fifteen and the clock stops." Yeah, and and you might be right. I thought that the rule was it had to be two back to back. I think I'm telling you, but it may then, just be two. If that's the case, then why did he not do it the last time? Because when he punted, it was well, no, five that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I think you're probably right about this. Um, so, so I, I thought it had something to do with the clock uh, because I, I remember watching it, thinking, "Man, something." Pat's something's got the ball this. before it was under four. It was well, yeah. It was no, there was like four forty-eight left. Or yeah, something but like before that. it was under. I mean, before it was under five. Before it was in the four yeah. minute. So the the kick happened before the five minute mark. Yeah, um, but either way, uh, Ryan Tannehill it looked awful. Goes in eight out of fifteen, seventy-two yards, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, I thought the pick was was the the death nail. I, yep. I thought it was the end of the ball game. That's you it. know, because it, the Pats are only down by one, and they have to get down, uh, what maybe to the thirty-five ish, yeah. and they just could not get anything going against this defense. Uh, 307 total yards for the Pats, 272 for Tennessee, and Tennessee found a way to get it done. And, and props to Vrabel for, you know, it, having just a tough-nosed team. You know, I don't think that they can score enough to keep up with uh, with Baltimore, but I do think that they can slow down Baltimore. Um, it, the line that came out for that game is like 10 already. I'd like to see Baltimore try to stop Henry. If they continue to pound the rock and just say, we're going to ride one man through the playoffs, and then that that be that, I, you know, show me a game plan that you can stop him. Because yeah. I don't know that Baltimore's defense is any better than the Patriots' defense. I'd, I'd like to see him try A.J. Brown deep a few more times. Uh, 
it, it seemed I like wouldn't. they went away I from would. that I quick. I love A.J. Brown. I, I love the guy. I love the guy. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But I there's there's just no way on earth I would have stopped giving him the ball. As long as he's rested and he's ready to take the next handoff, he's getting the next handoff. I don't care. You could show them where you're running it. He, they couldn't stop it. Yeah, and big, I don't know that Baltimore is going to stop it either. The only way they're stopping it is if they don't hand them the ball and they try to get cute with the offensive play call. Yeah. Uh, 57 total plays for the Titans, and 34 of them were runs by Henry. Another was a catch by Henry. Um, I mean, it's only 22 plays where he didn't touch the ball. That's yeah. that's pretty remarkable. So so let's let's talk about big picture. Let's talk about legacy. And let's talk about is this yeah. the end for Tom? Okay. Um, I emotionally prepared myself for this to be the last game that he ever played. Uh, that, that I, I think ever that's, played? I, I think that's got a chance. I, I actually think he's got a better shot at hanging it up than he does at moving to a, somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Back. But but the problem is is he openly hates this receiving core. He doesn't trust anybody on there. I know he's best friends with Jules. Jules is way past his prom and and out there struggling, can't can barely get open, and he's dropping passes and he's yeah, dropped that, passes all year. That drop That's, was the most uh, inexplicable. Like I don't understand what you're saying. Like I think we all know that he's. I've watched prime, all these it, games, and it didn't surprise me they dropped it because every game he's had several, well, and think, they're always big drops. But because big of drops. the because of the situation, I think it was surprising to at least you know the people that don't watch every Pats game. That's right. No, oh, yeah, I, nobody watches Pats game. They just check to see are they winning or they losing because they yeah. hate them. Yeah. But nobody, nobody, unless you're a fan, nobody watches them. I yeah, get that. It's, it, well, unless it's like a big game. Like, I, I think a lot of people watch the Ravens game. You know, there were a couple of games this year that people he, watch. He is, he, he, he's had big drops all year, and, he, and he's struggling to get open. He's yeah. just he's just lost so much speed. It is what happens to receivers. You, you get old. Life, the, 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 the length of, of how long you can play in this league as a DB or a receiver is not long. Agreed. All right. Yeah. Now, I mean, the only reason it seems longer than running backs is because running backs physically get beat up, but but they don't lose their skill set the way receivers leave their skill set. Um, and 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 the Bill Belichick whiffed about as hard as you can whiff at the receiver position. I mean, there are three or four receivers that went after Harry was taken that are way better than Harry. A.J. Brown. Two of them. Uh, two, one of them, A.J. Brown. And he could have had A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf with yeah. his first and second pick. Yeah. Could have had them both because he had a middle pick in the second round before where Seattle took him. Yeah. Could have which- had them both. You put both of those cats on this field, and that's a completely different team and a completely different game um, and, and just a totally different season. Now, it's hard to say. They won 13 games. I don't know that they lose three. I don't know that they lose the game against the Ravens. I don't. I damn sure know that they don't lose the game against Kansas City if they got two better receivers. Yeah. But Harry cannot figure out the offense. Harry does not know how to run routes. DK Metcalf's biggest knock coming out of college was this, he's really big, he's really fast, he's really physical, but he doesn't know how to run routes. You know who that sounds like? It sounds a lot like Gronk, okay? He blocks <laughs> like a champ when he's getting a hold of somebody, you know, that's a DB. Why wouldn't you take a chance on getting that guy? Well, on, on top of that, let, let's talk about the tight end position since you just brought up Gronk. Uh, they haven't been able to replace him with anybody. And, and so Sanu was a bust as a as a receiver. Um, I mean, that's just wasted a, a second wasted round second pick. round pick. Congratulations. Um, but the, the tight end position, to not go into the season having any kind of uh, – this is not typical Belichick stuff. For Well, so Mike Lombardi talked about this on his podcast a couple weeks back. Um, and I don't know if I, I shared this here or if I just told this to some friends or whatever um, and, and talking, uh, and we might have covered on the podcast before. The, the guy they wanted and the guy that they were targeting if Gronk retired was Jared Cook, who went to the Saints. Yeah. And Cook was going to leave um, the Raiders, and he was going to go to a competing, a contending team. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to try a chance to win a championship, okay? And he – uh he wanted. He was talking to the Patriots. Wanted to come to the Pats, and the Pats waited too long because they were waiting to hear about Gronk. By time Gronk had made his decision, he hadn't signed with the Saints yet. 
but he already had a deal in place. He had already been down there. He already met him. He'd already talked to Sean Payton, and he felt like this is just as good of a shot. I'm not going to burn this bridge with this guy to take a chance to go there. I've already got this deal worked in place. But Mike Lombardi said he felt like if Gronk made his decision as soon as the Super Bowl was over, then they would have ended up with Jared Cook. And that would have totally changed this offense as well, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right. It's Ben Watson, while he's an outstanding man and and does one of those unsung guys that just doesn't get the accolades because he's not a star in the league. That guy does more in the local communities that he lives in um, than than most any player out there. That guy can't play. Yeah, he just can't play. No, well, at, at least not to the. He's he is your prototypical tight end. He's not the new age tight end. At, he he doesn't catch the ball. Like he can block well, no, anybody. Nobody needs a prototypical tight end in their offense anymore. No, not anymore. Nobody. Not anymore. Uh, so it, you you think it's more likely Brady hangs it up as opposed to uh, moves to Chicago or not Chicago, um, uh, the Chargers or the Colts? Those seem to be the two. Uh, God, that people are just making that up though. Like literally, it that's didn't make any stuff. sense to me. That's just you know? stuff that that's literally stuff that sports writers are making up because they think they make sense. There's been no leak. There's been no report. Tom hasn't talked to anyone. These guys think, oh, if it was me, that's what I would do because I hate the Patriots and I they don't ever give me, you know, scoops and they don't ever give me, you know, leads and they don't ever give me any of this bullshit. Like, like that's all sports writers make. You and I know this. We, we, we get frustrated with them. We text them about it back and forth all the time. We see news articles and we're like, holy crap, that's happening. And then we read it and it's like, Oh, it was a tweet thing where a guy followed this, and that's it. And so, yeah. and somebody decided I'm going to write an entire article about it, and then put it out and speak about it like it's gospel. And no, uh, no, Adam Schefter is about as connected as anybody can be. Listen, that guy's trying to get clicks right now. That's all he's trying to get likes and retweets because he knows people hate the Patriots. And if Tom leaves the Patriots, it's going to be a mega, mega, mega story. Okay? Yeah, I don't see it happen. No, I think, if I think he does probably leave. Right. Let me tell you the best shot at him leaving, and it's going to hurt. It's going to suck for me. But wherever Josh McDaniels gets a job at, if they don't have a quarterback in place, I could see him taking a one- or two-year deal there. Yeah. I could see if he goes to Carolina. Well, that, that was going to be my question. Um, I could easily see him saying, we're not bringing Cam back, Tom. This team is really good. That, that we've got good young core stars. Come come to Carolina for a couple of years. I've got cap room. I don't know what Carolina's cap room situation looks like, but I'm sure they can find a way to get him, get him paid. And and you know, excuse me, we'll do a two year deal. And you could and I think he would go with Josh. That's if I had to guess, I think he would he would go play with Josh before he would just go to a foreign team where he doesn't know any of the coaches at all. So, so it, I mean, you think tell, he's going to go this. work for Anthony Lynn? Really? No, not at all. I, I'm, 18, I'm we don't surprised. even know who the OC is going to be there. Are they going to let that 28-year-old kid that started off decent his first game but then kind of got figured out by everybody really damn quick? Like, are they going to let him be the OC? You think John, uh, Tom's going to go work for that guy? Absolutely not. But that, that's that's my next question is, why, why would you leave to go play – somewhere else like I don't think he will but I also don't think he would want to come back to New England where he just lost his OC who he's known and worked with for 15 years on and off as the guys left in different positions and he hates this receiving core Nikhil Harry is not going to take a massive step next year he's just not you can't figure out how to run routes you're just not going to figure out how to run routes you might be a freak athlete if but you're 40, he'll try. If you're That's 42 years old and, and, you know, he'll turn 43 next year. Um, if he'll you be 43 are 43 before the season starts. It's so if you're that age and you, you have been comfortable where you are forever. And yeah, you may not like the receiving core that you've got, but why, like, why not just hang it up rather than go somewhere where you don't know any of the guys. That's why I prepared myself for that to be the last game that he plays. And I don't think he knows the answer, by the way. Anybody who's asking him today what he's going to do, he doesn't know what he's going to do. And so it, and it, if he does take one of these other jobs and, and one of these guys wrote some wild hair article six months ago and happens to be right, that doesn't make that guy right. 
Okay. It's not because but he was connected. It was because he. No, because everybody's just throwing shit at the wall and we're trying to see what sticks. Yeah. That's all they're doing. Yeah. No, no nobody knows because Tom doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes perfect sense. But um, if he played his last game and if that was his last performance, that game wasn't out on him. That pick six hit Watson in the hands and Watson couldn't catch it. No, it went you to know, the next I, guy. I saw on the Twitter. Pass by the, uh, so many. Now, he wasn't perfect by any stretch. But that dude still had fire in his arm. Anybody who says he was outdated, he was washed, he can't make the throws anymore, they are full of shit. That's I I agree with you a hundred percent. That's what I was gonna say is I saw on Twitter a lot that, you know, oh it Tom's just washed up, he can't get it done. What it that he was still flinging it, man. Like he still had uh plenty of strength in that arm. He was still able to make throws and he got no help. And, and he it, still moved in the pocket. And, and I will tell you, the L.A. deal, it, outside of the fact that I just don't think he's willing to leave Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels as his coaching staff and go for some 28-year-old kid that nobody's ever heard of in Anthony freaking Lynn, all right? But skill-wise, now that offensive line's got to have some help. He's 43 years old. We saw what happened to Rivers at 40 years old. Yeah. I think Rivers is a little bit more mobile than Tom is. Um, but he, he doesn't have a Keenan Allen. He damn sure don't have a Mike Williams. Okay. Yeah, you're right. He don't have a Hunter Henry. He don't have a running back core like that. Now I guess the running back core is probably comparable. If I had to guess, but I don't think Gordon's going to be on that core next year. No, so I think, I think you're right. I if they right. could find a way to boost that offensive line, then, then player wise dudes on the field. And then they have an elite defense, I think. Um, if everybody's healthy and can stay healthy. that that's It's not a bad situation. Him and Giselle are building a life in L.A. for TB12 to be based out of when it's all over with. So so if you're putting pieces together, that makes sense. I, I just think the difference between working for Bill and working for Josh, and, and maybe not for, but with those guys, and then walking into a situation on the last couple of years of your deal, your career, your legacy, and you're leaving it in the hands of Anthony Lynn and whoever the hell he hires as an OC, I don't know, man. That seems just crazy far-fetched to me. Now, we do know he is super competitive, so the idea of going out like he did this season uh, probably isn't you know, what he would like to do, yeah. but I think it's a lot more respectable than going and, and missing the playoffs for two years. You know, if they can make a big splash off and off field hire as, as at the receiver position, they can bring in if they spend some damn cap money and they brought in another offensive lineman and and another big time receiver and then spent their first round pick. Thankfully, they don't have a second round pick on a big time wide receiver or an offensive lineman because that defense is loaded. That defense is locked, and I think most of those guys are locked up. I don't think they're going anywhere next year. Yeah. So I don't think you have to re-sign or restructure anybody's deal or pay a lot of people on the defense if you can just throw all the money you can at the offense to keep it together and bolster it, get it a little bit better. Maybe maybe the Pats can make another run. I mean, they're all still there. I don't know who Bill hires an OC. I don't know if this will be a thing where they hires within house. That's what he's done every time he's lost one. I mean, he lost uh, Wisden Hunt, not Wisden Hunt. What's his name? Charlie Weiss. He promoted up Bill O'Brien. When he lost Bill O'Brien, he promoted up Josh McDaniels. When he lost Josh McDaniels, I don't remember who he promoted up, but uh, it was somebody for a short period of time, and then and Josh, they Josh back. Yeah, and then that guy either got demoted or went somewhere else. Whatever. But going outside the farm for an OC. I don't, I don't know if they're going to do that or not. Bill just doesn't do that kind of stuff very often. But somebody's going to have to do it. He's going to have to either hire an OC or a DC because he can't hire no, neither of them. And I just can't imagine Josh not taking a job this time. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree. At, at this point, uh, as bad as the offense was, if people still want to give you a job, at, you, you might want to roll with it. Might want to roll with it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and move into Sunday's games. We, uh, we, I doubt we'll spend as long on those. Um, let's see, the Vikings 26, the Saints 20 in overtime. It, the Superdome mystique is is maybe a little gone, and you and I, and so you you kind of talked me into the Saints here. Um, the Sorry only reason, uh, it's all good, it's all good. It, the only 
reason why I thought that the Vikings had a shot in this game, and I, I really didn't think that they had a chance to win it, but I thought they could keep it close, is because it, the Saints have been bitten so many times. It, you almost wonder if the players have started to feel like they are snake bit. And when you start to feel like that, you don't go in confidently. You go in just waiting for what bad thing is going to happen. And you, we can talk about, you know, the the no call on offensive uh, pass interference in the end zone for the last play of the game in overtime. You can talk about missed holding call. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. There were numerous opportunities, just like last year, for the Saints to win this ball game, and they could not get it done. The offense decided to to play its worst game in well over a month uh, at the most inopportune time. Uh, tell me, you know, why why were we so off on this? What what happened in your eyes? I, I actually think that the Vikings played a complete game. Now, oh, yeah. before the season started, we both really liked the Vikings a lot, and we thought they had a chance to win the Super Bowl. Okay, and and they got into the season, and some weeks they'd look great, other weeks they'd look mediocre, other weeks they'd look just right out bad. And it was just one of those situations where if they can play three or four complete games, they can win it all. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they can hang with anybody in the country. If they I play really a complete tr- game. With, with Dalvin oh. Cook in this offense – I don't this even is, know that it has to be just Dalvin alone. You don't have to kill him. Well, no, Madsen no, no. played his ass off today. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is that this team is completely different with Cook in the lineup. Like, he yeah. wasn't in the lineup the last two weeks, basically. Um, or the last two weeks of the regular season. And and it showed. It, this offense is so much more confident when they have him, regardless of what he's doing. Whether he's able to get yards or not, when he's on the field, he brings a certain... Uh, level of excitement, a certain level of confidence to this team that is just not there when he's not on the on the field. And it's amazing to me. And I get I get I I absolutely think that it was a push on but I I loved seeing the game winning touchdown catch go to Rudolph. The guy that's been there through it all, man, he saw bad years. He saw heartbreak years. He he has been on that team through different coaching staffs and 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 through so many quarterbacks and he has been just the the unsung soldier that just just keeps marching on. Yeah. And it was just it was really good as much as I wanted to see the Saints win the game. It, it was really good to see it go to Dalvin. I mean I'd go to uh to to Rudolph. It yeah. really was. Um that was a a dime. I mean th- th- how about this? Cousins, oh, the deep ball throw to, yeah. to, to uh, threw multiple dimes. Well, the the pass in the end, I mean, the fade pass it, that won the game yeah. was a dime. Like, he had some remarkable throws in this game under pressure. Like, he really showed out, and, and that's always been his knock. You know, they even talked about it on the broadcast is if you can get to him early, you get him rattled, he's going to make mistakes. He didn't really make mistakes today. Like, I, I was I was really surprised. Uh, at how well he played and and under pressure, uh, under the under the lights, like he really showed out. I was I was impressed. I, I thought this is the uh, the cousins that we would get when he signed there. I did too. Um, but and then he, he continued yeah. to make big mistakes in big games, and he just didn't make them today. You were absolutely right, by the way. Dalvin Cook, 130 total yards passing and receiving, two touchdowns. I mean, he's he is a monster. Um, it's nice that they've got somebody that can that can come in in spite of him. And the Saints went out there and said, we're shutting Diggs down because Diggs has been the killer all year long. Yeah. And what's amazing is, shout out to our boy Eric Scuscalzbo uh, with <laughs> Westlaw Pirates. He and I were texting back and forth a little bit about this game on the side. And um, what, what that team could have looked like if Thielen was healthy all year. Yeah. Now you're right. He changes this offense. He really does. And and you're only a couple of games away from a, a first round bye, from a home That's game, right. from home, yeah, from whatever. winning the division, from the first round bye. Yeah, you're you're a couple of games away. And does he matter a couple of those games? And it's interesting to see. Does Cousin make the mistakes that he makes if Thielen's there? Because he just seems to have trust with Thielen more than the other receivers. Yeah, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. 
Uh, that, they, that deep ball pass that he threw in overtime ooh. to get him down to the one to Thielen, whole oh, unreal. You, can't, you cannot throw the football better than that. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, Cousins completely outdueled Drew Brees. Uh, no Brees, question. 26 out of 33, 208 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, costly pick. Kirk Cousins, 19 of 31 for 242 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Thielen, seven receptions, 129 yards. Uh, Thomas had seven receptions for 70 yards for the Saints. Uh, this was a just uh, – it was a fantastic football game. I, I, secondary, the secondary for um, for the Vikings and the and the and the front side, the front defense all the way across the board. I mean, they're they're good. Yeah, they're, they're really really good. I mean, there's a reason why we picked these uh, why we picked these guys to go to the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, yeah, to win the division and go to the Super Bowl. That's right. I mean, there's a reason we thought this is the year. This is the team that we think can do it. And they, let's see. They had the football for 36 minutes and 56 seconds. Now, let's talk about the overtime rule because I've, a lot of people want to want to chat about this. Okay. Um, it, yes, we all understand that the overtime rule in college gives both teams a chance. Um, in the NFL, I, I said this last year. I will continue to say it. This is a team game. It is yep. not about – but – I, I believe that they will change this eventually, you know, where they both guys will get a chance to do it because it'll be good for TV. I, I don't. I don't because it will be bad for player safety. Hey, you may be right. They don't want the game to last forever. Well, it, that's it, so they've already changed it a little bit. Remember, like, if you go down and you kick a field goal, then the other team gets the ball. But that had to change, though, Gary. That had to change because guys can make 56 yarders now. Yes, I'm with you, but what I'm saying is you can score a touchdown and then give the other team a chance, and then if they score a touchdown, then whatever, like, whoever scores next wins. Like, I think that that's likely to happen. I don't think that it's best for these guys. I don't think it's best for the game. I think it is best for television. And I'm with you in doing. the sense of the defensive guys get paid too, man. They just do. You think yeah, Buffalo is scared game. of going into the going into a, a, a an overtime and not winning the coin toss? You think New England's scared of not winning the coin toss? No. I mean, the, the Saints held them to 20 points in the it, honestly. Uh, this held Vikings to only team, one by touchdown. the way, this Vikings team. You think there's that defense? You think they're scared of not winning the coin toss? No. no. There's several, and you can't penalize those teams because they built a good defense. Because we really like the Texans, we really like the offense on on Kansas City. Like, yeah. no, I'm gonna tell you this: I don't think Baltimore is afraid of not winning a coin toss. No, no, they, they got a good defense. defense, and they always have. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. And so I, I, I just I just think you shouldn't penalize those teams. You shouldn't make a rule that helps only a few teams. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it, it, take. If the Bears had gone to overtime last year, like it, it, a lot of times they might no, end up. You always want the ball. You never don't want the ball, but you're not afraid of losing the coin flip. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this: early in the season, the Steelers uh, gave the ball to uh, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens to start overtime. Hey, you remember that? I mean, it was yeah. one of the craziest decisions you ever seen, and and they got a three and out. And yeah, but it didn't mean it didn't mean they, were, they made the right decision. Oh no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like they got the ball when back, but they turn the ball and win, over. and you could yeah. break one. You can break any play wide open for a score to end the game. You never take the chance of that happening. Yeah. and you always want at least one shot of having the ball for that to happen. Agreed, agreed. But what, what I'm saying is, uh, teams are not scared of playing defense. Or Some teams are not scared. Arizona Cardinals, they need to win that coin flip. Because yeah. if they don't win the coin flip, they lose. Because they don't know how to play defense. Kansas City last year? Yeah. yeah. Kansas City last year, absolutely. Now, this year, defense quite a bit better. Yeah. But I still think they're afraid to lose it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, New Orleans in, should not be afraid to lose it. That defense has played really good all season. Difference in this ball game between the Vikings and the Saints was the Vikings had 40 rushing attempts and the Saints had 17. So, <laughs> my family is home. <laughs> So, yeah, 40, 40 rushing attempts to 17, uh, pretty drastic. And yep. regardless of yards per rush, anything like that, um, 
when when you feel like you can control the line of scrimmage like that, like the Vikings were able to, um, you got a real good shot of winning, whether you're on the road or not. And and they went out and showed it. And so it was it was impressive. Uh, let's go ahead and close out. Let's talk about the last game of the night. Let's see, we're at the 49-42 mark. Seattle 17, Eagles 9. And this is the same score as the matchup just a few weeks ago, <laughs> which is kind of remarkable. In the same city, same score, uh, ball game was a little bit different. Yes. I, I, think, I think Seattle probably should have won by more, I think, regarding how many players the Eagles were missing. Uh, McCown was uh, great in mop-up duty, or not mop-up duty, but in in a backup role, right? Like a fill-in. He he came in. Now there's the, been times where I told in that in that Atlanta game, he drove them all the way down the field, and then as soon as they got on like the five yard line, Carson's all of a sudden I'm healthy now, and he gets back in and they pull McCown. I, I don't know that they take much steps backwards. I'm telling you, I just don't think they take big steps backwards. Well, but they, they couldn't get a touchdown in this spot. And I don't know that they would have gotten a touchdown with Wentz either. I don't um, know. Yeah, I'm you know, with you. I don't obviously, think so that's, that's one of the great unknowns. Uh, but this is one of the reasons why you talk about, or you talked in the past about keeping Foles as opposed to Carson Wentz. When and, you could have sold Wentz. It's not, I would yeah. rather have Foles over Wentz. I'd rather have Foles. And at that time, you could have gotten two first-round picks yeah. from Hang on, and don't think about this. You're getting two first-round picks from a team that needs a quarterback, so they're probably pretty bad. Yeah. All right? So you're getting two pretty damn good first-round picks. I would You give me those two first-round picks, and I'll take Nick Foles and 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 McCombs. Yeah. McCown. 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 We call him McCombs. McCown. I'll take Josh McCown and, two, and, and, and Nick Foles, the combination of those two cats, and I'll take your two extra first-round picks. Yeah. I, All day long, I, I you agree. can have wins. I, it I, I really hate that he went out so early. That Carson Wentz went out so early, because it, you just wanted to see it. Yes. You know, like you just wanted to see what he would do in this situation, regardless of the fact that we we took the Eagles to win. Um, regardless of all that, it would have been nice to see what he would be able to do in this situation, because we still haven't seen it. Like they've made it to the playoffs three straight years. He hasn't gotten to play. Like he took snaps in this one. But he hasn't gotten to play in any of the three seasons in the playoffs, and, and that's been his biggest out. He gets he gets a he gets a pass card every year. At what point in time do we stop giving him a pass card? Well, I think I think this year we we stopped giving him the pass card because well, I stopped before this year because well, yeah, I said no, no, before the confetti hit the ground, sell, sell, sell. Yeah, sold. First guy with the two 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 uh, two pick offer. Gone out the door. Yeah, out the door. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I don't think that this team would have made the playoffs last year without Foles. Uh, I don't think this game would have been competitive without McCown. I don't either. I really don't. I really don't. And and you know what's funny? So let's talk about Seattle, the winning team, the victor here. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Russell Wilson didn't wasn't really like magic Russell Wilson. No, he did make some really awfully good throws. Uh, but, but DK that's Metcalf. what he's going to do. I yeah, mean, and, he's a stud, but and it Metcalf wasn't. was unbelievable in this game. Like he This was, guy's a monster. Yeah. He's going to be a monster for years and years and years to come. Him and A.J. Brown are the two biggest misses in the draft. A.J. at least went really early second round. D.K. went late second round? Yeah, yeah. Early third? Something no, no, like no, that? No, late, late second. Late second. And, and both those guys, there are – Many a receiver that went in the first round that are not deserving compared to those two guys. Hey, They're hey, just hey, not. Let, let's uh, let's give a little credit to uh, Hugh Freeze for getting both yeah. of those guys to Oxford because yep. that's just that was a remarkable receiving core that they had down there. Yep. So no doubt. Yeah. This uh, it was it was fun to watch Beast Mode. Uh, he gets a touchdown in this one and he looked like his old self, man. Oh, six six touches, seven yards. I mean, yeah. I, I know, but it, it was still fun to watch him. I mean, he was still running people over. Like, it, 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 he didn't do it a bunch. But So, what's the matchup next week? Uh, the matchup is uh, the uh, Vikings and the 49ers and the Packers and the Seahawks. Okay. So, you, you got the snow. You got uh, Lambeau. 
You got, I mean, it's going to be cold. It's going to be great. I can't, I cannot wait for this. Wait, tell me what you're thinking here. No, oh, I will do it. We'll do a breakdown before of that game before we get there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not ready to make a decision now. I'm not excited about that matchup at all. I'm just not. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be fun. I, I hope I, so. I think all of these matchups that we have now are going to be a lot of fun. You got the Titans that's, against that's the Ravens. That's the only one I'm not I'm not super excited about. You got the Texans against the Chiefs. Um, I think that could be a lot of fun with Deshaun Watson oh, and, and Pat The Texans and the Chiefs are going to be a great game. The the uh, the Titans. T- Titans and the Ravens is going to be an awesome game. They're going to be more rushing yards in that game than they've been in football in the last 20 years. Maybe yeah. 20, not 20 because we used to run the ball a lot in the night, you know, early 2000s, late 90s. But in, in the last 10 years, definitely. And uh, and 49ers and Vikings is going to be elite. Yes, I, I think so, I agree so with that. I, five seconds on this and we'll get out of here, okay? We've gone right. long, whatever. Uh, I found it interesting, sent this in our text thread uh, earlier, that uh, NBC got the pick of the litter of the games, and they got the only snooze job there was. And it, it, I, I, I'll, I'll give it a little more credit. It – it at least came down to the wire. I mean, McCown had him driving, um, you know, had a shot fourth down to get, you know, a touchdown to, to get him. But for the most part, the game was boring. Oh, the game was dreadful. Dreadful. The game was boring until the last, I don't know, 30 minutes of like real time. I don't know, seven minutes of football time. Yeah, it was a snoozer. It this was, was a snooze job. And all the rest of the, even the Patriots game, because Henry was just so explosive and scary every time he touched the ball. The, even the pass game was a great game to watch. Yeah. It was just a great game to watch. All the rest of the games were incredible. You get to pick the litter. You can pick any game you want. This is why I don't like picking games because of the biggest markets. Yeah, I agree. They pick the two biggest markets that would draw the biggest number, and you got two guys in the booth trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. That's exactly right. I mean, this was... It was boring. It was incredibly boring. There were great storylines. You know, McCown coming in, uh, only the second quarterback ever to take a postseason snap beyond the age of 40. Uh, he was 18 out of 24, 174 yards. Rivers, no, no, that can't be right. He has to be the third. Because Rivers, was Rivers not 40 last year? No, no, no. He, he's not 40 yet. I think he's a, Rivers like, is 40. No, Rivers is a 40 year old quarterback. But it, maybe he turned 40 this year. I'm going to look it up as we speak. Um, but, yeah, that's they, they said it on the broadcast. Uh, okay. So, yeah, Phillip Rivers' age, let's see. He is 38 years old right now. I thought somebody actually, told me that Phillip Rivers was actually, the other 40-year-old quarterback. Just turned 38, actually. Oh, he's that close. December, 3rd, or December 8th, 1981 is his birthday. So And Breeze isn't 40 yet? Bre- Breeze is 40. And Tom is 40. Yeah. So that would be the third in this playoffs that's right. alone. Maybe that's, let's see, January 15th, 1979. And, and Brett Favre was over 40 when he played for the Vikings. That's, that's, that's a, not right that's, at all. That's not right. No, that can't be right. He could be what the second, second player. Oh, no, no, no. no. To, how about, hey, to take his first postseason snap? Oh, he didn't get, oh, who was the first then? Holy uh, crap. Man, this guy's name. Uh, just somebody uh, from like the '30s that played for a hundred years. Yeah, it was it was somebody in the '70s. It was like 1978 yeah. or something was the the last okay. time that it happened. Um, yeah, okay, I don't care then. I don't care. Yeah. So, but either way, uh, McCown, you know, great storyline. Uh, Miles Sanders, 14 carries for uh, for 69 yards. Um, you know, I, I mean, whatever, right? They got to get some receivers there. Yeah. Oh, Everybody's yeah. going to give Carson Wentz a pass until he has a receiving core, and that's a. I, I disagree with that, but okay. Um, uh, Tom Brady didn't have a Hall of Fame receiver for his thir- first three um, uh, Super Bowls. Uh, Super Bowls. So, you know, all right. Yeah. Deion Branch is pretty good. Not great. Um, yeah. So, at some point in time, they're going to have to get some talent. Or, or The problem with front offices is, is they want to protect the quarterback at all costs. And – I just think it's not wrong for to make these guys compete. I just. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I'm not saying kick the guy to the curb. I'm not. I'm saying we're bringing in somebody else, and the guy who plays the best is going to start. Yeah, 
I, I don't okay think that, that that's wrong. I, I just if you're Drew Brees, maybe not. Okay, if if you're Tom Brady, maybe not. If you if you've done it for 15 years and you're a bona fide Hall of Famer, but but I say this all the time for Cleveland Baker in Hall of Famer yet. Carson in a Hall of Famer. We're not getting gold jackets for these guys yet. Let's, let's bring it, somebody else in. Let's compete. Mitchell Trubisky. They're the, the Bills are saying they're going to go forward with Mitchell. What? Well, why are you just making that a foregone conclusion? Like well, I'm not saying you guys spend a first round pick on a cat, but but you don't know that you don't find Dak Prescott in the third round this year in the draft. Just just bring somebody in and let them compete. I have How a uh, got... I, have a, I have an interesting question to uh, to wrap us up. Okay. Uh, do you think there's any shot that Drew Brees? Might retire after this? Yes. I, I Nobody seems to be talking about it. Yeah, but I, that, I wouldn't, think that wouldn't shock me at all. I I, think, I don't know that he's going to, but it wouldn't surprise me. I, it wouldn't surprise me either. Like, I, I with, with Taysom Hill and Teddy Bridgewater there, uh, obviously I think Bridgewater is, is the next guy. Hill's not um, an everyday quarterback. It, no, 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 he's not. He's not, but he's a uh, hell of an athlete. And I want him on my field, yes. but he's not. He's not an everyday quarterback. I, I'm, I'm surprised that more people haven't discussed this. You know, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not Brady hangs it up. Breeze looked a half step slow in this game. Yep. And I just, I wonder. Like, I don't think the Saints are going to be able to win with him going forward. The best thing that happened to him was he got to miss half the season with his broken thumb. Yeah. Because and, and if they, he has to play in all seventeen, all sixteen games, and then play this week, then then we don't know that he plays half as good as he played today. I, think about this. I mean, they they went five and zero oh with Teddy Bridgewater, and and played some pretty tough teams. Yep. So, you know, I my I my know. argument my argument for competing, and then we legitimately can get out of here is <laughs> you. You never have Russell Wilson if you just give the guy you hire and pay the most amount of money to the 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 keys to the kingdom. Okay. Yeah, Seattle brought Flynn in been, yeah. Seattle brought in Matt Flynn and paid him a monster contract at the time. A monster contract at the time. Okay. And then they had another quarterback, I don't remember who that guy was, who was over him. And Pete Carroll went into training camp and said, I want these guys to compete. I want everybody competing for a job. And I think that was Pete's first year as a head coach. If it wasn't his first, it was his second. It was really fast when he got to Seattle. And I'm telling you, they never find Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson gets buried on a depth chart somewhere if he doesn't have them competing for positions. And he had the balls. He had the stones to say, I know we're paying Matt Flynn $14 million a year. And that was back in the day where – the highest paid quarterback was making like 17. Okay. Yeah. He was one of the highest paid guys in the league, but I'm starting this rookie that we found and everyone thinks is too small because I've watched him compete and he's better than the other guys. Yeah. That's, I, I think that's the, like part of the problem is that the payroll has gotten so ridiculous for, uh, it was in uh, Pete's third year. Was he, that Pete's third year? Yeah, 2010 is when Pete came in. I uh, felt like it was right after he had gotten there, which two, meant his, two, his his first full season had completed, and that was his first real off season. He came in in 2010, so he coached 2010, 2011, and, Russell, and Russell's, Russell's draft. 2012. So it's to start his third year. So he had yeah. two years under his belt. Okay, man, that was that's shocking to me. All right, but anyway, neither here nor there. That, I guess that's irrelevant to the thing. He just made sure. Everybody competes here. Yeah. Nobody's handed anything. I don't care about your contract. I mean, we, we're going to work contracts out to get the right amount of players. And, Qu- and Quarterbacks were not paid uh, back then the percentage of the salary cap that they are now. And I think that, that is, had a lot to do with it. That is correct. But, man, at some point in time, if you hit on the cheap unknown guy, oh, you can lose all that money by cutting that other quarter, that high-priced quarterback. Sell yeah. him for pennies on the dollar. And you're still golden, but you got to have the best guy compete, the best guy on the team, because you lose the team if you don't. Oh, yeah, I agree. There are people in the locker room that know there's somebody behind this cat that nobody's getting, giving him a look. But we know in this locker room, I guess better. Yeah. No, you're you're right. You're right. All right, All right that's going to wrap up our recap of the NFL wildcard games. 
Uh, we'll have several more shows this week, of course. Uh, if you would, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you comment. Tell us what you thought about the games this weekend. Uh, if you are on a podcast, if you're listening on a podcast, make sure you leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you hit subscribe. Keep downloading. We will uh, we will continue all of this through the NFL playoffs, through the off season. We're going to talk college basketball. We're going to talk everything else. Uh, you can find out everything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, go to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. Again, tunicatravel.com. We'll give you more information. And, of course, as always, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN, W-I-N, for 20% off of your order. Uh, they've got great college and pro gear, all your favorite stuff. Go check them out, Smack Apparel. Any order over $40 is going to ship for free. So go check them out, smackapparel.com, tunicatravel.com, and winningcureseverything.com. Chris, anything else we need to hit? No, nah, we hit it all, brother. Absolutely. All right, brother, we will talk again on Tuesday night. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.